Oh, howdy all, grab yourselves a beer, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Now today, we got a whole lot of information about the new Kinetic Bolt skill, Spell Slinger support, and a few other little changes to wands that are coming in 3.10. So attacking with wands in the past, wands have felt like clones of bows in a way. Uh, wands were better for a long time, but they fundamentally did the same thing, ranged projectile attacks. Then Kinetic Blast was nerfed, and at a similar time, Mirage Archer was added. Now, Attack Wands are niche, and Bows reign supreme. On the flip side, Wands also have an identity as Caster Weapons, but there, they felt like clones of Caster Daggers. You desire the same stats on each of them, and get similar benefits from them. Essentially, which one you use just comes down to whichever you can get better stats on. This is changing, big time. So the biggest change that was announced today is the addition of Spell Slinger support, which I describe as a build your own herald effect that reserves mana and triggers skills for you. Now warning, we don't have hard numbers on this skill gem yet, so be, be prepared, you might get disappointed when the actual gem information is revealed. However, the first thing that was revealed was Kinetic Bolt. And I think it's hard to explain what's going on from this skill. If you have a read of the text description, it's a little bit of a mess to try and work out what exactly is going on, you know. It fires a projectile a short distance before forking, splitting into a primary projectile and a limited range secondary projectile, each angling off at 45 degrees from the direction the skill was aimed. Then starts doing this at regular intervals or when hitting enemies, forking five times at gem level one, creating an angular spread of projectiles over a wide area. So that can sound like a little bit of a mess. The best way to, to explain this skill is actually to watch what it looks like in action. But not just to watch it in action, but to watch it at 25% playback speed. Now I'm going to show that in a sec, but just a quick warning. I've muted this video. If you're looking at the video yourself, the Grinding Your Games preview video, uh, and you do put it down to 25% speed, which is a YouTube setting, uh, absolutely mute it because 25% sound uh, speed videos sound terrible. So, without anything further, let's go and watch this. And like I said, it's been muted. So, you'll see the attack is made, and there's this projectile, like there's, there's a primary one that's going across this way, but it's not always going the same way. Fundamentally, what this skill is doing is not too dissimilar to Scorching Ray in that it gives solid coverage in front of you. And here it is at a higher level character using it this time. Uh, they've also got Herald of Thunder going, and they're just basically mowing down a bunch of enemies there. So, we'll just finish this quick encounter. The Allies Can't Die enemy is good to see there, because you'll see that they're having a little bit of trouble targeting it. So, going back to the discussion thread here. Uh, it's providing strong coverage directly in front of your character, and meaningful but lesser coverage in, a, in up to a 90 degree cone. The closer enemies are to the center, the more of the damage they're taking. And the skill also has some interesting interactions with a number of, of support gems. Uh, Fork, it, it interacts with, but I actually think it interacts quite poorly with Fork. Uh, so what Fork will do is it will cause the skill to fork an additional time. However, it's already forking five times. Uh, there's a huge opportunity cost for choosing to put Fork on the skill, and I don't think you're getting a payoff for it. So, I don't suggest using that. Uh, barrage is interesting. With Barrage support, each shot fired still performs all forks, resulting in both high single target and extra side projectiles. I think Barrage support might be interesting with Kinetic Bolt. Additionally, you're going to get this really early. Uh, if you're playing a Witch, you're going to get this as soon as you kill, uh, as soon as you do Enemy at the Gate, which means as soon as you kill Hillock. Uh, it's going to be one of the very first skills that you're offered. And if you're not playing a Witch, then as a Ranger, a Shadow, or a Scion, you'll be able to buy this skill gem as soon as you've killed Hillock. Now, so that's Kinetic Bolt. It's an interesting one, but it's not the big exciting reveal today. That is Spell Slinger. So firstly, I want you to think of Herald of Ice. Herald of Ice fundamentally does two things. It has flat cold damage, and it has a trigger. The trigger condition is you shatter an enemy which usually means that you've killed a frozen enemy. Uh, there's a couple of other interactions that can cause you to shatter an enemy. The payload, when you meet this trigger condition, is that you get this cold damage AOE explosion that deals a big chunk of damage. So that's Herald of Ice. 
familiar skill for many of us. And one that actually looks absolutely fantastic in game. So Spellslinger is different. Spellslinger lets you essentially create your own herald effect. Uh, it's one, or you can alternately think of it as a build your own poet's pen. Spellslinger support is linked to a payload skill. Now the first one that I thought of was Glacial Cascade and that's showcased in GGG's video, but feel free to experiment with other options. The payload is triggered. So with uh, Herald of Ice, to trigger the payload, you need to kill a, shock, uh, a shattered enemy. You need to shatter an enemy, sorry. You need to kill a frozen enemy. Uh, that's a reasonably difficult condition to meet. With Spellslinger support, all you need to do in order to trigger the payload is to fire an attack from a wand. However, because this is an inherently easier condition to meet than, killing a, uh, than shattering an enemy, there is a cap of once per 500 milliseconds on this... Uh, on this payload going off. So, in addition to the payload being cast, the payload's base damage is increased by the base damage of your wand. Now this is the information that's shown on the wand, not when you equip it to your character, but when you just mouse over the wand in-game, it'll show you its physical damage stats, it'll show you its elemental damage stats, and its chaos damage stats. Uh, these, are the, these are the stats that matter. It's not relevant what the attack speed of the wand is here. And so this means that you can chunk up the damage on a skill by adding to the base damage of your wand because this damage is added to the payload skill. So for instance, if you're triggering Glacial Cascade with this and you have a wand that has the Merciless and Annealed uh, modifiers on it, causing it to have massive physical damage, and also has the malicious modifier on it, causing it to have lots of extra chaos damage, then your Glacial Cascade will deal all of that extra damage as well as its normal damage. And then that'll be affected by Glacial Cascade's normal mechanics of 60% conversion of the physical damage into cold damage and anything else that you're using to modify it. So this creates a whole new dynamic in one gear desirability. Combinations of mods that were too unfocused to find a use in the past can now truly shine. Spellslinger defaults to costing 15% reservation. Now this is cheap for utility skills like Wave of Conviction that you don't usually want to support much, but is brutally expensive for six link skills, especially if one of your support gems is the very expensive uh, on mana greater multiple projectiles or awakened greater multiple projectiles. Now just a very important reminder, we don't have the numbers on Spellslinger yet. It could have a huge less damage multiplier on it in which case it might end up just sucking like Lancing Steel did when it was launched. But I'm optimistic that this could be a good skill. We'll get these hard numbers sometime next week. Now I see three main ways to use Spellslinger. The first one is to autocast debuffs on a character that focuses on attacking with wands. So let Spellslinger handle cursing enemies or inflicting elemental exposure via Wave of Conviction while your attacks do all the damage. A hypothetical setup here. You might have conductivity as a link to spell slinger in a four link and the other two spots which would also be linked would be wave of conviction and physical to lightning support you would then be attacking with a wand skill that primarily deals lightning damage so this would mean that your wand is one that uh, deals that adds lots of lightning damage to attacks and this hypothetical setup i believe will reserve 32 percent mana it might be 31 percent uh, 16.5% rounded for the Wave of Conviction, and 15% for Conductivity. So Conductivity won't be affected by the 110% mana multiplier from Physical to Lightning, but Wave of Conviction will be. Uh, with this combination of, of skills, you're going to be reducing enemies' uh, resistance to Lightning considerably, uh, whilst also getting more shocks because of Conductivity, if you weren't already at 100% chance to shock and you'll then have an easy time triggering your Herald of Thunder to kill enemies that are in the wrong area around you. So that's my first hypothetical setup. Uh, you're fundamentally, you're an attack build there. Uh, you might be using Barrage as your primary attack, so that's not Barrage support, that's the original Barrage gem linked to added lightning damage support, or awakened added lightning if you're able to source one of those, and linked to weapon elemental damage, linked to a few other attack related uh, supports as a six link. The second option is to build your own flicker strike 
automatically cast movement skills. This is something that has been popular with Poets Pen users. Uh, I've never played a Poets Pen build myself. Uh, I probably should get around to that one day. And it's something that is certainly powerful and can be very, 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 very clunky as well. Lots of people swear by it, so I'm going to assume that it's, that it's as good as people say it is. But as I say, I have no personal experience with this. Uh, you'd be able to use any spell as a movement skill here. So then whenever you make an attack with your wand, uh, suddenly you are casting Lightning Warp whether you wanted to or not. The third way that I can see you using, uh, uh, getting a lot of value out of the Spellslinger support is a heavy payload setup. So here you put all your effort into scaling a Spellslinger payload. Your wand is used to make utility attacks. So what that means is that you're making an attack where you don't really care how much damage the attack does. Any damage it does is part accident, part uh, like convenient little bonus. Some of the sorts of uh, triggers or skills that you might use would be Power Siphon, which will give you, give you power charges, Frenzy, which will give you frenzy charges, or possibly, linked, or possibly either of these could be linked to Curse on Hit, or even Awaken Curse on Hit, if you're able to source one of those. All this time, your 5 or 6 linked Spell Slinger does the heavy, heavy damage. Or alternately, uh, once you reach endgame and you start being able to really source some quite rare gear, you could conceivably use a 4 linked helmet with an Essence of Horror or an Essence of Insanity hel uh, helmet in it. What these do is they give you a powerful more multiplier. Uh, Essence of Horror is a direct more multiplier, it is 30% more elemental damage to socketed skills. And Essence of Insanity is a slightly different one, 50% of a socketed skills deal 50% of physical damage added as extra lightning damage. Both of these really juice up the amount of damage that your attacks, oh sorry, that your uh, spell is doing, at least for Essence of Insanity you do need to be able to make, to make use of that mod, uh, but um, Glacial Cascade it'll work. Alternately, you could use gloves with essences of hysteria, delirium, or horror, all of which will have their uses, and all of these can keep the cost of the mana reduction of Spellslinger down really low, because they're four links that get almost all of the benefits of a full additional gem in them, but they do that without have you having to pay the extreme co mana cost that comes with having a five link or a six link. So my initial thoughts are to go with a heavy payload approach if the numbers on Spellslinger are favourable. We're going to know this late next week. The revamp Wandslinger node really can help here a bit. Notice that the 25% increased damage while wielding a wand. Uh, that's universal damage. That is not just to attacks, not just to spells. Uh, that applies to both of them. And importantly, it applies to things that are neither attacks nor spells, uh, such as Herald of, All uh, sorry, Herald of Ice. Uh, that's something that's very hard to scale otherwise, and I think that can be quite juicy there. So, how would I put all of this together? Well, here's an aspirational goal, and I'm warning you that this outline is for a high budget build. I do think it can work at a low budget, but I'm less confident about that. Uh, we'll have to see how it goes in practice. So, this would be an Eternity Shroud full conversion build. Uh, you would use a Shaper Wand that has good chunks of cold and physical damage, uh, and you could get some benefit from lightning damage potentially, although that changes how you gear the rest of the character. You'd then be a spell slinger that has you would be using spell slinger with payload glacial cascade in either essence helm or essence gloves. These would be crafted onto a shaper base, and there's lots of good options there. You would link this to cold to fire support and to one more support. Maybe awakened added cold, although the numbers need to be checked on this. You would equip one shaped pyre ring. So this is the re relatively common unique ring pyre, but you need a shaped version, which means that you need to scour chance a, a scour chance the appropriate base type of ring until you wind up with a shaper uh, pyre that comes from that. That can be quite a nuisance of a process. Scour chancing pyre isn't too bad. However, if you've gone with an Essence of Insanity Helmet, which I think might end up being the highest damage option, uh, then you're also going to need a shaped Call of the Brotherhood. And Call of the Brotherhood is a legitimately rare, unique item, so scour chancing that uh, is a, takes a lot of uh, scouring orbs and chance orbs on average. 
You then use Shape of Life and Resist and Utility Items and other damage in other slots. Uh, try to get some Crit Multi on the rest of your gear. And then you would go a Trickster because Harness the Void is absolutely bonkers when you are converting damage. And Trickster has lots of other goodies in it as well. And of course, you're going to be using the Atsuri Flask because the Atsuri Flask is insane. And you're then going to be using Jun's Crafts that add elemental uh, that add both spell damage and elemental damage as added chaos to your to each of your wands because you're going to be using two wands probably. That's a bit of an outline, a very quick outline of a build. It's not something that I've actually put together or run any numbers on. Uh, it's something that might be an aspirational goal for me to get around to playing with in 3.10. We'll have to see. Once more. Let's wait on the numbers before we get too excited about Spellslinger. The other option that I think you could conceivably go is Zerfi's Heart. Uh, Zerfi's Heart is an interesting one. This would still be an Eternity Shroud build, but it's not possible to get Zerfi's Heart on a shaped base. So that means that you'll end up with uh, Zerfi's Heart prevents you from getting the, the maximum possible value out of your Eternity Shroud. You can't have a shaped item in every single slot. However, Val Power Siphon will then trigger this incredibly powerful gain soul leader for 10 seconds when you use a Val skill. But also your chaos damage, which you're going to be dealing a lot of in this setup, can ignite, chill, and shock. You're going to be dealing a lot of chaos damage due to all of the various uh, conversion shenanigans you're going through. Uh, and also because you're probably going to be a trickster again. Uh, so this is something that excites me as another option. Again, this is something that really needs to be run through some serious numbers once we know Spellslinger's numbers on it. The last thing to discuss is that there are some minor numerical changes to some of the familiar one skills. So here in this one skill balance section, Power Siphon and Kinetic Blast now deal a higher portion of base damage at lower levels, growing to slightly more damage at higher levels. So essentially, this is a small buff to endgame players using Power Siphon and Kinetic Blast, but it's a huge buff at low levels. And at low levels, this is really important. Uh, to be honest, these skills suck at low level. Not only do they suck at low level, but because they're so bad at low level and there's no alternatives, they make attacking with wands something that's not really viable until, I think, at least in my opinion, it doesn't start feeling good until you get to about white maps. I think their goal here is to make it so that if you're playing a wand build, uh, you can just start with Kinetic Blast, or you can just start with Power Siphon. Maybe you'll get lucky and pick up a Val Power Siphon when you're leveling, because Val Power Siphon is really good. And then you can just keep using that uh, all the way through to endgame. Changing out your support gems, of course, and upgrading your wand every now and again to get, to get your hands on something better. Uh, this is something that I think will be a huge improvement. Gone will be the days of going, oh, you know what? I'm going to be playing as a Wanderer at Endgame, but on my way, while I'm leveling up, I'm just going to use whatever crappy skills I can to do so. So I'm going to level as a Stormbrand character, and then when I get to level 65, I'm going to unspec all of the brand sections of my, of my passive tree and spec into the wand nodes that I was nearby. So... The last thing that's changing is, of course, that uh, Crown of Eyes is going to be improved. And so there's a lot of, you know, we, we need to see numbers on that, but it looks like it's going to be interesting. Anyways, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on how you're intending to build around Spellslinger, or whether you're more excited about Kinetic Bolt than I am. Maybe, you, maybe that's the skill that you're really looking to uh, put something together around. If you've got any comments or questions, definitely fire away below. Otherwise, going to leave it there. Hope you have a good one.